Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We're going to finish up today with a special selection which is where one of you tell me exactly what it is I need to check out. Today's special selection comes at us from Dylan. Pick the artist Blackfish and there are three songs up for contention and they couldn't pick one so they said I could make up my own mind. I'll, uh, they couldn't make up their own mind to let me flip the proverbial three-sided coin. Dylan, I hope it's okay, but I did not flip any coin. One of those titles stood right out to me, and I had to check out what it is. Your hair is straight, but your boyfriend ain't. Is <laughs> ah, uh, it's such an an eye-catching title. I just I couldn't ignore that. I couldn't leave it up to chance. So that's what we're gonna check out today. Let's see what Blackfish is bringing to the table. So we got a 5-4 going on right here. Into a 3-4. Similar riffage too. Okay, yeah, they get real playful on the fourth bar of every phrase, uh, neater-wise. Yeah, okay. Really cool layering right there. Guess how much this shit costs. Far too much for one of us. If I had a penny for every high street, beautiful Lord, harmonies. Just beautiful, mathy melody. Ooh, boy. Those snare accents are throwing me way off. That right guitar idea in that 6 8.
what wild uh, polymeter going on there. Wow. Oh, my hat. Can't let y'all see my hair today. I wore a hat because my hair is a mess. <laughs> um, wild ride. Just Here's the thing. It's, it's at a weird crossroad. It's not even weird. It actually makes sense. I just would never expect it. It's at this crossroad, though, of like indie rock and math rock and prog metal like Dillinger Escape Plan or like Car Bomb kind of stuff and they find a way to blend all of this mostly seamlessly I'll say that the the prog metal stuff is the most divisive it was there at the beginning and we got a couple of snippets out of it closer to the end as a transition idea but for the most part it never really came back and it never really worked itself into the rest of the mix but it could also just be this track and you know bands have more than one song uh, they play around with different ideas on different tracks so uh, you know that might just be something for this song in particular but it's just it's really cool to to hear all of this come together it has the chill laid backness that I find in indie rock with those really clean, I don't even know how to describe it. it. It's the clean guitar work, but there's something about it that just is lacking the punch. It's lacking the oomph. Um, it's, and, you know, we talked about this during indie rock week, and I coined the term budget rock, where it sounds like you're playing on cheaper instruments with cheaper uh you know, amps and, and cabinets and maybe you can't afford the pro the producer you want or the, the recording studio that you want. And so you kind of compromise on that as well. And it ends up feeling a bit underwhelming in the production of it all, even though the, the music, the composition is all legit. Uh, and, you know, y'all told me, you know, that's kind of a thing that happens in indie rock a lot. So I, I've kind of correlated the two sounds, but I still like the term budget rock because it... Uh, you know, indie rock can be a lot of things, but budget rock is a specific type of sound that's, you know, created. And it's not necessarily done with budget hardware either, but it's kind of what the aim of the sound is for. It's to get that sound of, of underproduction. Um, and they pair this sound, though, and the type of uh, soundscapes that we would get in indie rock with really intricate time signature changes, tempo changes, harmonic layers, and fun chords with tons of tapping. <laughs> That's where the jazzy mathy element comes in. And it's just a bonkers. Like, I'm, <laughs> I already know there's going to be people in the community, if they haven't heard of Blackfish before, they're just going to be like, this is my jam. I'm going to have to check the rest of this out. Um... It's it's just uh, what it's fire. It's, people still say that. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm showing my age already. Picking up on lingo from last year. Um. So yeah, let's let's get into this. We we start off with some prog metal stuff, right? We we kick off immediately in a five four idea with screaming and distorted guitars. Um. And it's this really rough, disjointed riff. Like, beat five does not lead into beat one. It feels like it's abruptly stopped. Um, this transitions... Well, actually, the, the other thing we got to talk about is that bar four of this phrase is extended a little bit. I think there's an extra beat in there pulling it to six four. Um, and this is something that I'm probably going to talk about a lot because it honestly happens a lot in this track, is that... Our fourth bar of a phrase, or our eighth bar in a phrase for some of the longer phrases, is extended. They allow for an extra beat to exist. And a lot of the times, interestingly, it's four sixteenth notes just quickly picked um, of the same note. <laughs> it's like you had your riff, and then just like da 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 da, and then we go back into. Yeah, four sixteenth notes, and then you go right back into the beginning of the riff. It's like 
interesting. <laughs> it changes things up. Tons of contrast. It's like a really hard reset point for the riff. Um, but yeah, like that happens like in three different riffs is at the end of the phrase, they'll add an extra beat, four sixteenth notes, and just start it over again with the original time signature. Um, and we get an introduction to that immediately. It's the first idea we hear. We do this a couple of times though. We pull into a three, four idea, which is a variation of the same riff we had just heard, but shortened, condensed down to just three beats. It is still not uh, symmetrical at all. It still feels like it's very disjointed where we're falling into that next bar. And it's just a, a very chaotic opening, what, 30, 40 seconds maybe. And then it all just kind of gives way for our B section, which is relaxed, calming, Beautiful chords, um, just pretty much the exact opposite of where we just were. I don't remember the time signature here, but it wasn't long before we went into a 4-4, four, four, which was about the time the vocals came in, which, like I said, it's not, not that far from when we started this section, but I can't exactly remember where we were when we came into it. Drums are laid back, bass is laid back, uh, the guitar just has these beautiful ideas and then we get this really nice vocal harmony in as well and it's just so chill where did this come from why is it here um but this pretty much sets the tone for the rest of the song we do escalate in uh width and occasionally a bit of more distortion volume but we don't ever really go back to the heaviness of our intro there. And from here on out, we kind of jump between one of two ideas. The first one is 4-4 four, four, with tapping. Not even always. It's 4-4. Four, four. I just want to focus on that. Uh, usually this is where vocals are in. Uh, the vocals do not always exist in 4-4. Four, four. Sometimes we have some sections in, I think the 6-8 section that we finished the track out on had vocals to it as well. So it's not like the vocals exclusively have to sing in 4-4, four, four, but it is a common recurrence that we hear throughout the track. We have some chordal stuff underneath. This eventually gets shift over to some more moving ideas, but the concept right here is to make some room because we just filled up a ton of space with all this noisy metal stuff. It's to make some room in the top end for these two vocals to exist. And it's just this gorgeous moment. And this, like I said, it sets the stage for the vibes and feelings for the rest of the track. And then we can explore the rest of this uh, this atmosphere in further complexity after we've established this rude idea like like it's they're, they're just saying check it you know it's going to be a bit more chill it's going to be a bit more you know level right here we're going to have these brighter chords there's going to be some complexity it's not just rhythmic stuff we're going to be exploring melodic and chordal stuff to get prepared right this this is the warning of how things are going to be if you were uh you know, caught off guard at the beginning. And we do explore a lot of really cool things. Uh, we end up hearing these beautiful tapping melodies. We end up exploring these cool jazz chords, really introducing these neat suspended notes above chords that just completely change the flavor and emotion of the sections we're in. Um, and we continue to explore new time signatures. I don't exactly remember the order of everything after this. It just kind of blurred together into that indie rock part of the song. <laughs> but uh, we definitely re we revisited a 5 section. We went into a 6-8 section. Um, we had a couple 4-4s. Four um, so, like, just constantly seeing, you know, how can we change this? What can we look at? How can we utilize the same emotion and explore it in different ways Analytically, I suppose, would be the way to do it. It's not really exploring the emotion of it. The emotion is set. It's exploring ways to represent it. Um, 
And I also like how this section introduced the vocal harmonies, which is both vocals together, important. It introduces our two guitars playing pretty much the same thing together. And from this opening idea until we hit the end of the track, we begin to split things apart. We hear solo vocalists, we hear call and response vocalists. Uh, the only thing I think we were truly missing was both vocalists having their own lines. We didn't hear any vocal counterpoint here. Um, but our guitars ended up giving us that. We did hear uh, the guitars call and response. We heard the guitars doing the same thing together. And we also heard the guitars doing their own ideas. Um, and by the end of the track in the 6-8 section, it was kind of bonkers just how many layers were going off at the same time, which is just pretty typical for math rock, but sounded very cool in that indie rock sound. To me, at least the math rock, the math rock I've heard has all been higher production stuff. There's a perfection um, and technicality in the musicianship that is reflected in our production, but here we do sort of the opposite. We marry that very clean, precise, uh, intentional playing with a bit of a muddier, looser kind of production style. And it's really interesting just to hear the, the, the mishmash of those because, like I said, it's a sonic quality I don't typically associate with this type of playing. There are very few styles of music that I think I've heard. Well, I guess it'd be most... Well, yeah, we're just going to say styles of music where more technical playing has not led to cleaner productions, or I should say clearer productions, at least. That's not to say they don't exist, and we've definitely listened to some more technical-ish black metal, so we have had it on the channel, but there is a tendency that if you're going to play something complex, you're going to want to unmuddy your mix, or ensure that the mix isn't muddy so that that technicality doesn't end up overlapping on each other and either one sounding bad if that's what you care about or two not being able to be heard which is what I would care about if I'm playing technically if I have a technical proficiency going on I would want people to hear the proficiency I would want that clarity there as a performer but there's also that artistic intent and like there's all sorts of things that you know come into why productions are chosen and stuff like that uh, but it's just not a combination I typically hear so it's just very cool. It almost sounds like these, uh, you know, guitar virtuosos who are like young kids who are still on their starter guitars and they just put in the effort to, to get really good at tapping and stuff. And they just don't have the funds to necessarily make the song sound like they want to. And I'm not saying that that's what happened. This might be exactly how they want to do it. They might not be young kids. They might not have, you know, financial issues with getting their band off the ground or whatnot. But that's the image it gives me. The other thing we got to talk about, vocal harmonies. There's something just off, no, not just off, there's something slightly different than my expectations for the notes chosen in our, in our harmonies. Um, it's, it's right there in the same realm of what would I, I would expect from uh, like pop punk. Uh, I guess pop punk is, is kind of the best place, maybe even like a, a hardcore Nope, that's not what I'm looking for. What is that genre? I don't know. I hope I hope pop punk is enough to kind of get you in the right direction for this. But um, the interval is slightly off. I think a lot of pop rock tends to use octaves and fifths. And I think that's the thing is that going on here, there's like a, a fourth. Or maybe it could just be typical indie rock stuff where they're not going for perfect tonality. And maybe they're just a slightly sharp and flat, which is creating some tension in there. Um, and it's just a really cool texture to be adding to this. There's all this. And see, that's the thing, too. It's, it's about this whole song to me, sonically, production-wise, is about marrying uh, proficiency with muddiness 
with improficiency, I guess you could call it. We have this technical playing with a slightly muddy mix. We have uh, this really great vocal harmony, but it's slightly out of tune, or it's, it has extra tension in the the uh, the dyad that they've they've chosen to utilize for most of this. Um, and it's it's just it's an interesting quality for the whole song to have it. it it's it's full of personality. I can't say I've heard anything like this. Something else that I really liked about the vocals is that while a majority of them were consistent in their distance, so if they were a fourth or a fifth apart, every note was a fourth or fifth apart, but they didn't rely on that for everything. There were moments when they chose to change the relationship and actually have varying movements in the harmony, uh, and it was far and few between. I probably would have liked a little more variety in our harmony, but it was really nice for those moments to come through. Uh, the drumming was... I honestly don't know. <laughs> that's that's pretty bad, but I was so focused on time signature and what the guitars were doing and what the vocals were doing, trying to check out the bass. I honestly have no idea what the drums like or, uh, the drums were like on this. Um... But I'm not happy leaving that as is. So give me one second. I'm going to refresh my mind a little bit on that. And uh, we'll come back, check out, you know, talk a little about the drums, do some lyrics, and uh, we'll head out of here. All right. So, yeah, I'm really glad I gave that another listen. Uh, the drums definitely need a bit of love in here. Um, just insane. Partially melodic drumming. Uh, there's also some really neat ideas in here. There's some cross sticking that goes on at times. It might even just be hitting the, the snare <laughs> without doing the cross stick technique just to get a nice, very, you know, narrow attack without getting a big sound out of actually hitting a drum. Um, or I guess a sim like, yeah, hitting, hitting the side of the drum or doing a cross stick would be in the same realm as like the hi-hat. That very narrow, short, uh, brighter sound. And it's actually paired with the hi-hat in sections too. It's just really beautiful movement all throughout the kit. Um, but the other thing that really stands out to me aside from the variety of sounds and combinations is just the pure rhythmic nature of it. It somehow simultaneously keeps the meter in most sections while also pushing against the meter. There's so much polymetric ideas going on in here. And by the end of it, I even called out that <laughs> there were so many rhythmic layers in that final section. I remember saying that in the reaction that uh, it's just, it's just bonkers. And a lot of it comes from accented hits in the drums. The guitars have their accents too in the tapping section. Some notes are hit just a little harder than others. But it's more of a subtle accent, whereas the drums are just laying down these loud snare cracks against uh, more normal volume <laughs> hits on everything else. Uh, and it's always some weird syncopation, too. It's never like always on the downbeats. Uh, there's offbeats, there's triplets thrown in there. It's, it's just the drumming is fits perfectly and it's very it's very mathy type of drumming but it also finds a way to to inject a groove into everything somehow uh and it's just yeah well worth it the lyrics the lyrics are about dissing on the indie king which is in capitals in the lyrics, and he's some person who seems to have a big music collection and wears weird fashion, like a like a hipster wearing fashion before it's cool. Uh, in, in particular, they're trashing the fact that he wears cowboy boots and waistcoats. <laughs> um, and it's just about tearing down this person and even assaulting him. It says that we'll drown and dissect him with his own CD collection. Uh, and it just seems to be a, 
against this idea of indie fashion, of trying to be the first to dress away, and maybe even in a sense, fashion trendsetters who aren't necessarily out there to be a hipster fashionista type person, but they are trying to set the trends and you don't set trends by wearing what is popular now, you set trends by wearing what's popular tomorrow. Uh, and the song just seems to really hate the idea of this, the, the whole concept of it. Um, and there's definitely a consumerist angle to it as far as also, well, as well as a, an angle of just uh, these people being rich and that would also displace them from the people who are trying, who they want to buy their stuff, right? You set the trend so that other people will buy the clothes. And one line says, guess how much the shirt costs? Far too much for one of us. Um, it also likens these as uh, a dime a dozen. It says, if I had a penny for every high street lookalike, I'd be a happy man. Um, but it even looks at the ephemerality of it. Is that a word? <laughs> Taking ephemeral to whatever that ality putting ality at the end of it i don't know if that's a real word anyways looking at how ephemeral this whole thing is the very last line is don't get excited it soon expired i'm sick and tired of all the buying so it kind of wraps it up into just an anti-consumer uh or even anti-capitalist message here uh that the people who are trying to be trendsetters are just advertisers for tomorrow's clothes and that it creates this cycle of throwing out clothes because they're out of fashion even though the clothes themselves are still good if the shirt doesn't have holes and isn't you know stained or anything why are you throwing it out just because some dude on the internet says it's not cool to wear anymore so yeah that's pretty much what the track is about it's a kind of an angsty look at uh, the consumerist element of fashion and I can get behind that message. Musically, I don't really see any tying themes there, but that's that's fine. <laughs> Indie rock isn't really one where I tend to see themes lining up, uh, unless it's more of a conceptual type of indie rock. So same with math rock. Like it's really difficult to work technicality into your lyrical themes. <laughs> Musical, I mean, you would have to talk about something that's highly like math rock works well for describing like. Uh, moving systems, you know, how, uh, how a clock works, for example, would probably pair very well with the math rock track. Um, but other than something like that, I think it'd be very difficult to find topics that would thematically pair well with intricate styles of music like tech death or, you know, math rock or anything like that. So it's just one of those genres that, uh, well, I guess like most genres, like sometimes, like when we get to Funeral Doom, there, I think there's going to be huge synergy there. But you don't necessarily have to write a sad set of lyrics or a weighty set of lyrics to go with a Doom song. It's just that typically that music is going to attract people who are going to want to write that type of music. So I think there's just more synergy there. I don't know. I'm rambling here. Those are my thoughts on Blackfish's Your Hair is Straight, But Your Boyfriend Ain't. I don't even, I'm trying to think of how that correlates to the lyrics. But the the thing is, I see a lot of this with like um, pop rock and even some indie rock where the lyrics, I mean, where the title is just like randomly picked from something else. Uh, like Chiodos is real bad about this. <laughs> their, their titles have nothing to do with their songs. Uh, Fall Out Boy, um, even Panic at the Disco, I think, uh, at least their older tracks used to have this. First, well, first album. I think pretty odd. The the titles were fairly uh, thematically aligned, and I didn't listen to anything after that. So, which reminds me, I haven't listened to Pretty Odd in decades. I'm gonna have to give that another spin. Fever, you can't sweat out. It's like a a yearly listen for me. But anyways, I am way off topic now. Those are my thoughts on Blackfish. <laughs> this is where you all come in. Hit me up with your comments, your thoughts, your ideas, anything you like to add on. Put those comments in the comment section i mean it's it, it's right there in the name it is the comment section that's where the comments go i don't even know why i'm repeating myself above that is a description box and there's a link for linktree
It'll take you to this menu right here as links for everything related to the channel. You can find multiple ways to support the channel, a link to the Discord community, uh, a link to the music I've written, and so much more. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three. That wraps it up for today. We'll be back tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 10 p.m. UTC. We're going to look at our penultimate uh, gibberish band name, song, and our final special selection for the week. Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos. Thank you.